The inverse square law. Yes, it's one of those phrases that strikes fear into the minds of new and even experienced photographers. Why? Because we're talking about physics. It's an equation. You know, math. In this video, I'm going to do my best to simplify this inverse square law stuff for you, so stay tuned. Hey gang, my name is Joe Edelman, and my mission is to help photographers like you to develop a solid understanding of the hows and whys behind great photography so that you can achieve your goals as a photographer. There are tons of videos about the inverse square law, and they all start out with the math, even though most of them admit that you really don't need to know the math. If you've watched many of my videos, you frequently hear me talk about not using four letter words. Auto, pose, film. Well, math is a four letter word, so don't use it. For all you numbers geeks, if you want to know the equation and the exact math behind the inverse square law, I don't want to waste your time. You're not going to find it here. There's this thing called Google. Go check it out. For those of you that want to gain a practical understanding of the inverse square law and why it's such a big deal, Follow along. There are two pieces of physics that every photographer must learn if they want to be able to consistently create great photos. One is depth of field. I'll save that for another video. The other is the inverse square law. The inverse square law is about how fast the light falls off and how far it spreads as the distance from the light source increases. Light intensity or brightness drops much faster closer to the light source than it does further away from the source. It also means that the closer your subject is to the light source, the harsher the shadows and the quicker the light will dissipate. The further your subject is from the light source, the dimmer the light will be, but the shadows will be softer and the light will spread over a larger area. Take a look at my lineup of eggs. The eggs were set six inches apart and at f22 the first egg is properly exposed. Pay close attention because this is where most people start to misunderstand the inverse square law. In order to get the proper exposure for the second egg, we need to shoot at f11. Now that's not one stop, but two stops difference. You see, each time you double the distance of the subject from the flash, the light falls off by four times, not two times. Uh-oh, I see a lot of you scratching your heads. Don't give up yet. The inverse square law really is your friend. It's a very powerful tool as long as you understand how it works. Let's look at an even easier but more useful example. Here you see a portrait subject seated three feet in front of a neutral gray background. The light is a medium sized softbox placed three feet in front of the subject and my aperture is f16. In the finished image you see a darker gray background and well defined shadows on her face. You also see large catch lights on the camera left side of the eyes. Notice also that the catch lights are in the upper half of the eyes where they should be. To achieve this I have the softbox placed with two thirds of it above the face and only one third below since I still want the light to have a natural top-down effect. So let's move that light back to six feet, which is double the distance of the three feet example. Now my aperture changes to f8. I've doubled the distance of the subject to the light, and as a result, I have just one quarter of the amount of light, which is a two full stop difference. You should also note that the background appears a little lighter, and the shadows are softer, and the catch lights are smaller. Remember, this is the same medium sized softbox with the same power settings on the flash, just at double the distance. Let's double it again. This time I'm going to move the softbox back to 12 feet. Remember, I started at 3 feet, doubled it to 6, and now I've doubled it again to 12. Now my aperture changes to f4 because I only have one sixth of the light that I started with. You can see that the shadows are even softer yet. The gray background is even lighter, and the catch lights are even smaller. Let's compare all three. The first image on the left, three feet at f16. The middle image, six feet at f8. And the image on the right, 12 feet at f4. You can see as the light moves further from the subject, the shadows soften, the background gets brighter, and the catch lights get smaller. The flash is set at the same power for all three shots, and the softbox is set at exactly the same height for all three. So does this help? Remember this tip. Light close for sharper shadows, bigger catch lights, and darker backgrounds. Light far for softer shadows, smaller catch lights, and brighter backgrounds. Now that's just one way that the inverse square law impacts your lighting. Let's look at another scenario. In this setting I have two models 
that are three feet and four and a half feet from the light source. You can see that the model on the left is much brighter than the model on the right. If I move the two models to six feet and seven and a half feet, you can tell that the model on the left is still a bit brighter than the one on the right, but definitely not by as much as in the first example. In this version, if I move them to 12 feet and 13 and a half feet from the light source, you can see that they're virtually the same brightness. If we look at the close-ups, the first version closest to the light source, the model on the left is much brighter. In the middle distance, the models are closer in brightness, and in the final frame, the models are virtually the same brightness. You can see that each time I double the distance, I lose two full stops of light. I promise you, it's more important to remember visually what you see happening here than it is to remember how many stops of light you lose at what distance. That's why we have light meters, so that you don't have to do the math. Photographing two or more people, back your lights up to keep your subjects evenly lit. Now that you've seen three different scenarios and how the inverse square law impacted them, let's look at a very common mistake that new and young photographers make while they're learning the ins and outs of lighting. Unfortunately, I see this mistake frequently in images that are posted in my Facebook group, and that is a photographer putting their light source or modifier too close to their subject. When you do that, you wind up with a situation like this, where the top of the subject's face is brighter than the bottom or one like this where the subject's hand is brighter than her face, which causes the hand to be a distraction. Since we understand how the inverse square law works now, we know that we can back the beauty dish away from the subject and get a more even light. Likewise, if we back up the softbox and raise it slightly, we get the same skin tone and brightness on the subject's hand and face. I find photographers making a similar mistake with models standing too close to a light source. It's fine if their arms and hands are at their sides, but if they move any part of their body closer to the light, you wind up with a very bright hand. If we simply back up the light source, we can even out the light so the hand and the face are of equal brightness. Are you getting the hang of this yet? Please notice that I haven't made you listen to all that math stuff. The reality is there's nothing wrong with knowing all the physics behind the inverse square law, but what is more important is understanding how it works and practicing so that you learn how to recognize these challenges and how to use the inverse square law to overcome them. Let's look at one more aspect of the inverse square law that I haven't discussed yet. In addition to the intensity of the light diminishing rapidly, the light spreads as it gets further from the source. You can see in this diagram that at a distance of three feet, my light source is covering nine square feet and my subject is properly exposed. Now we learned with the eggs earlier in the video that if we double the distance to six feet, we'll have one quarter or 25% of the light intensity. But look at what happens to the spread. Now the light covers four times the area or 36 square feet. If we move three more feet to nine feet, we now have just 11.11% .11 of the light intensity, but we cover an area that is 81 square feet. Take a look at this group shot that is lit with two shoot through umbrellas and speed lights, one on either side and fairly close to the group. The lighting in the group is not even as the people on the outsides are somewhat brighter than the people in the middle. If we back the lights up, now the group is evenly lit from side to side and front to back, and the crazy shadows on the wall almost completely eliminated. So the simple math is that if you need to cover a bigger area, back that light up. Now I know that some of you are thinking, what about modifiers? The modifier doesn't really impact the inverse square law. It impacts the shape and softness or even the intensity of the light, but the light coming out of a softbox still spreads as it gets further from the source. This applies to beauty dishes, umbrellas, octoboxes, parabolic reflectors, and even snoots. If you've been paying close attention, you should have noticed that you can also use the inverse square law to change the tone and brightness of your background. Let's go back to this setup with a beauty dish and a reflector. With my subject three feet in front of a gray background and the dish about two feet in front of my subject, we get this medium to dark gray rendition of the background. If we double that distance, the background gets even darker yet. And if we move the subject and the light even further from the background, we get a nearly black background that still provides a little separation. All of this with one light and a reflector. Needless to say, I could go on for hours with these variations. Just understand that if you want to be able to consistently produce well-lit images using studio strobes or speed lights or LED lights, you can't ignore the inverse square law. The sooner you embrace it and work to understand it, the better your lighting will be. 
Light close for sharper shadows, bigger catch lights, and darker backgrounds. Light far for softer shadows, smaller catch lights, and brighter backgrounds. If you're photographing two or more people, back your lights up to keep your subjects evenly lit. If you need to cover a bigger area, back that light up. So there you have it, the inverse square law. Just so you know what you missed by not talking about the math, here's the equation. Okay, now you've seen it, forget it. Go set up some lights and practice. I hope you find this helpful. Please hit that thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss any videos. And until next time, go pick up that camera and shoot something because your best shot, it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios.